we have been uh, discussing oscillators and the first oscillator topology that we discussed was the LC oscillator which is whose loss is compensated by a negative conductance. The way we make the negative conductance is by having a voltage control current source and placing it in positive feedback right. Now, uh, what happens is that the uh, controlled source or the nonlinear the negative conductance will be nonlinear and that nonlinearity uh, determines the output amplitude ok. Now, we took a particular case of uh, nonlinearity which is it is linear in some region and then it is current limited in the other region beyond a certain input voltage and that is used for uh, realizing the oscillator and it turns out that this is a very good model for a certain uh, uh, oscillator that is used widely in practice ok in radios and so on even your mobile phones there will be oscillators like this. Essentially what happens is in steady state the control source will be uh, sending square pulses of current into the LC tank circuit. The square pulses of current have uh, components at the fundamental and the harmonics ok. Now, if the tank before you connected the uh, negative conductance if it already has a high enough Q high enough quality factor then what happens is all the harmonic currents do not generate any voltage across the tank or rather they generate small voltages, but we assume the impedance is small enough that they are negligible. So, essentially the voltage across the tank will be just one sinusoid at the fundamental frequency ok and under these assumptions we can also calculate the amplitude right and it turned out to be if uh, the currents are limited to plus minus i naught and the parallel loss resistance is called R p then it is 4 by pi times i naught times R p ok. It is basically the fundamental component of the uh, current in the square wave pulses times the resistance value ok. Any questions about the L c oscillator? So, when you come to some course like R f circuit design you will see that there is a circuit called a differential pair which can steer current in one way or the other and that can be connected to the L c tank to form this oscillator ok. At high frequencies it is a popular oscillator. Now, when you come to lower frequencies what happens is you do not use physical L s at all because L s are just way too bulky. So, if you make oscillators you will make them without using inductors ok. So, one of the ways is of course, you have already made a second order filter right which is equivalent to having L c I mean we have R L c and c. If you remove that R if you send the loss to 0 it becomes an oscillator. So, if you have that uh, the, the two op amp circuit that we had ok and there there was one resistor which determined the quality factor we called it R q ok and if R q was set to infinity that thing becomes an oscillator ok. So, that is another way of making an oscillator and there is an endless variety, but we will discuss another uh, topology uh, which is also somewhat popular at low frequencies. So, first of all the filter we had we had an integrator. and I will show this as a negative gain this also we implemented using op amps, but uh, we needed that. this is what we had right this is correct or no. So, now how do we turn this into an oscillator q factor is r q by r. So, to make this into an oscillator if I set r q equals infinity that is simply I open circuit this that does that and of course, I do not need the input anymore. Now, this is an oscillator right. So, I remove this also ok. The 
is fine. So, all we have is two integrators in a negative feedback loop and that becomes an oscillator. Okay. So, let me call these V O 1 and V O 2. If you look at this op amp, there is some circuit here. What is the what is the voltage here by the way? At this point, minus minus V O 2. So, what is the relationship between V O 2 and V O 1 enforced by this circuit? Huh? I mean including the resistor. Yeah, so we get V O 1 to be minus 1 by SCR times the voltage here or it is basically 1 by SCR times V O 2. Okay. And what is it that we get from this the relationship between V O 1 and V O 2 from the other integrator? Hmm? 1 by SCR in this case it is minus 1 by SCR times V O 1. Okay. So, any such uh, two integrators in a loop and then now one of them has an inverting sign the other one has non inverting uh, sign. So, if you put them in a loop essentially you are trying to put two integrators in a negative feedback loop and that will oscillate. Okay. And in fact, you can see that this is very close to I have L and C and let me call this I L and maybe Laplace domain I L of S V C of S. What is the relationship between I L and V C enforced by the inductor? Due to the inductor what is the relationship? I L of S is 1 over S L times V C and what is the relationship enforced by the capacitor? V C of S is uh, minus 1 by S C times I L of S. So, it is exactly the same as you can see you have two integrators in a feedback loop one is inverting the other is non inverting and then uh, that gives you steady state oscillations. Okay. So, any time you just if you just happen to have I mean let us say you are trying to make an amplifier and you come up with a new topology and maybe carelessly you have two integrators in a feedback loop without any damping it will actually oscillate. Okay. You will have to do something to make it not oscillate and another way to see this is let us say I break it here oh sorry not there uh, I break it here. Okay. Maybe let me copy this over otherwise it becomes too messy. So, let us say I break the loop here and I apply V test. What is V return that comes here? What will be V return? Yeah, that is all. It is a double integrator, right? Minus 1 by SCR square times V test. No, it is already. So, there is a minus through this and a minus through this and a minus. So, there is just one minus, there is a minus there. Okay. So, what is the loop gain of this loop if you think about it that way? Yeah, basically you exclude the minus sign. So, it is that part. Sorry, I mean V test is not part of the loop gain, just uh, this one. Okay. 
and what is the Bode plot of that? What will be the Bode plot? What is the magnitude? What will be the Bode magnitude plot? Minus uh, it will fall off at minus 40 dB per decade everywhere. Actually, there are two poles at the origin, okay, and the phase minus minus 180 degrees everywhere. So, what is the frequency at which it will oscillate? Where does this go to 1? The loop gain 1 by RC, okay. Clearly, it is very obvious that at that point the magnitude is 1 and the phase is 180. So, the loop gain is minus 1 and it will oscillate. Okay. So, every oscillator can be seen in many different ways, but any of these oscillators which are harmonic oscillators that is they have these poles which are on the imaginary axis or slightly in the right half plane. Okay. So, thus this is how it will be you can define a loop gain and find that the loop gain will be minus 1 at some frequency. In reality what happens is that uh, it will start oscillating and because of some extra bandwidth limitation in the op amp, the amplitude will start rising and it will get limited by the supply voltage of the op amp. Okay. So, every oscillator will be like that, the amplitude will be something fixed, although a linear oscillator you cannot tell what the amplitude is, there is no linear oscillator. So, that problem does not arise in fact. The only thing is I mean when you want to generate sine waves of high purity that means, very low harmonic content you want only one frequency. Then if you let it limit to the saturation voltages it would not be a very good sine wave. Okay. In the LC oscillator also we assume that if the Q is high enough you will get a sine wave, but that sine wave is not very pure that is the harmonics will be there I mean it is uh, the harmonics are small enough for us to make the approximation for calculations and so on but there may be like only one hundredth of it and maybe say in some cases you need harmonics which are I do not know one part in a million of the fundamental. Okay. So, for that you should not let the saturation limit the amplitude, you have to have some other way of uh, actually detecting the amplitude and regulating something inside the loop. If the amplitude goes beyond that you make the Q positive, I mean you make the poles go into the left half plane. And if the amplitude goes beyond that, sorry, if the amplitude goes below that, you make the poles go into the right half plane. If the amplitude goes beyond that, you make it go into the left half plane, so that the amplitude gets stabilized there. Okay. So you shouldn't let it saturate, but you need a more sophisticated amplitude limiting mechanism. But all amplitude limiting mechanisms they aim to do this. Okay. There is some fixed uh, target amplitude. The idea is to, if the amplitude goes beyond that, uh, you should make it uh, damped so that the amplitude will fall off right. You should make it a lossy resonator and if the amplitude goes below that you should make it have a negative loss. So, that is it tends to blow up. So, finally, it will stabilize to that point and this point should be uh, I mean this is a we would not go into the details of this at all. I will just show you one example uh, which is of also some historical interest, but otherwise uh, this is how you make if you want to make oscillators with uh, uh, which are basically give you which basically give you sinusoids that is harmonic content should be much smaller than the fundamental amplitude, you have to do something like this. If you let it saturate what happens is the harmonic content may be small, but it will not be negligibly small. Okay. Any questions here? So, we will go to one more oscillator which we will discuss in some detail and it turns out that is also the oscillator that you saw in one of the quizzes. So, we can discuss that. Okay. Any questions about the LC oscillator or the double integrator oscillator? In general, I mean if you take any uh, circuit and then be a little careless with it and get L of s equal to minus 1 somewhere, you will get oscillations. Okay. Which tutorial? Yeah, it is the same thing right, we already worked it out is not it. Yeah, we can discuss that later. I do not remember exactly what the question is, but uh, as I recall the question in the tutorial yesterday's tutorial was exactly the L C compensated by negative conductance, right. Yeah. What is that? G n is not? 
yeah yeah okay so what i uh, so you can calculate that in detail right in fact if you you assume that the input is a sinusoid i don't know if that was what was asked you can calculate the output waveform exactly right in pieces like within a cycle there will be a portion in which the sine wave is amplified and there is a portion where it is limited and so on so if you want to calculate the fourier series you can do that just that the integral which runs over a period will be divided into two different pieces where it is limited and where it is not limited so you can calculate the answer i don't think that's difficult but what i already told you is that uh, once gm goes beyond 2 gp actually it doesn't even have to be as much the amplitude that you calculate by assuming that the slope is infinity will be very close any other questions I mean were you asking about how to calculate the harmonic content is that the graph of what versus what yeah yeah close through the resistor okay yeah so now uh, okay i am able to show it to you now of course i am imagining a low frequency scenario so uh, certainly i will not be using inductors right physical inductors here of course in the double integrator oscillator also i didn't use inductors so this is possible but this is just one more circuit So let's say the input is some um, VP cos omega t. This is an ideal op-amp. What will be the output? K VP cos omega t. Okay. So one way to think about uh, making an oscillator is. So let's say I have VP cos omega t here. Okay, and this will be uh, this will give me k times VP times cos omega t. Now I'm looking for looking to make an oscillator. So I don't want an input, of course, here, right? I don't have that cos omega t source. That was the idea. So what can I do? So one possibility is I'll connect this to some circuit. Okay, and let's say this circuit is such that this gives me vp cos omega t okay and this point here i instantly switch it from this voltage source to that okay so let's say i do that then it looks like the everything i mean the circuit equations are satisfied and this should be a self sustaining solution right Does it sound convincing? I mean, if I had VP cos omega t as input, I would get k times VP times cos omega t. I take the output and I put it into some circuit, which gives me again VP cos omega t. That is no phase shift, nothing. Okay, and I instantly switch from my voltage source input to this. Okay, then everything should be fine, right? I mean, nothing has changed in the circuit. The solutions are fine, and looks like we have got ourselves an oscillator. Does it sound right? No, no. This is giving me VP cos omega t, right? And the output is k times VP cos omega t. And this op-amp circuit doesn't care like where the VP cos omega t comes from, whether it comes from this voltage source or any other place. So if I find some other node in the circuit or any place which also has VP cos omega t, and I instantly switch it, I mean this is just a thought. Everything should remain the same, isn't it? Why? 
like, what's wrong with what I said so far? <laughs> huh? Yeah, but I mean, I, uh, first of all, if I do this, it looks like I will have a self-sustaining solution. Okay, but I mean, for this to be a useful oscillator, we have to also make one more constraint, right? this should happen only at one particular frequency okay right because we want an oscillation at one particular frequency we don't want a circuit which has possibility of self sustaining solutions at any frequency that's not what we are looking for we want this only at one particular frequency okay so that what does it say it rules out the resistive divider right because the resistive divider i think in fact you have probably seen this in some tutorial So, this is k minus 1 r r. What is the ratio of r 2 to r 1? If you want, if you want 1 by k the voltage there, what is it? What will it be? What is the ratio r 2 by r 1? k minus 1 again. Actually, there is no feedback in this circuit and any solution will be fine. You can assume that any solution will exist, but this is not what we are looking for. We are looking for this condition to occur only at one particular frequency. Okay. So, what should be in this circuit? I mean in general what is the what do you want for uh, what is the functionality of this circuit? Huh? This should give you an attenuation of 1 by k that is a real number right 1 by k at one particular frequency. Is this fine? So, of course, there is like an infinite number of ways of uh, doing this probably, but let us say I do use not a resistive divider, but some impedance divider. Okay. So, here what I get is some frequency dependent attenuation of the output voltage. Like I said, I should arrange the z 1 and z 2, so that I get frequency independent attenuation of 1 by k at one particular frequency and only one frequency right. So, how would I again there are lots of choices, but just give me some suggestions for z 1 and z 2 and of course, let us stick to somewhat simple circuits right. I want z 1 and z 2 to be frequency dependent right clearly, because this uh, I should not get a frequency independent 1 by k. Okay. At the same time z 1 and z 2 should have the same phase that is the phase angle of the impedance should be the same at one particular frequency. So, that way I will get a real number 1 by k as the attenuation factor. Okay. Is this fine? So, what should I what should I do? Just give me some suggestions for what z 2 and z 1 can be and I already have restricted the I mean I said no inductor. So, there are not that many choices here. Z 2 is R and C ok. What is that? Which is parallel? For what? For the other one. Yeah, I mean this seems to be fine, right? Is not it? I mean let me call this R 1 and C 1 and R 2 and C 2. Okay. You can try any other thing, I think you will just you can keep on making new oscillators. So, what is the impedance of the R 1 C 1 combination, the magnitude and phase? What is the magnitude the series combination? What will it start from? Where will it end up? What what do you expect there? Huh? 
at very low frequencies what's the equivalent it's just a capacitor right i mean so it behaves like a capacitor and the capacitive impedance will fall off at minus 20 db per decade and at higher uh, frequencies at very high frequencies what's the equivalent only the resistor so it will be equal to r1 okay and what is this frequency 1 by r1 c1 and what is the phase angle of this impedance Uh, minus 90 and then no no it is minus 90 where at which frequency okay at low frequencies not exactly up to what is what is the phase at this minus 45 okay What is the other one? R2 and C2 in parallel, what will its impedance look like? What is the very low frequency, what is low frequency impedance of this? Huh? What is the low frequency impedance of this? R2. I will just show it as some other value and then high, high frequencies 1 by C. So, it will may do something like this. I mean the cutoff frequencies need not be the same, I am just showing it like that. And what will the phase of this look like? Huh? Okay, and then minus 90 at high frequencies at this frequency it will be pi by 4. I do not mean to imply that uh, the intersection will be where it is pi by 4, but it will intersect only at one point that is what is important, right? Because the then the ratio z1 by z1 plus z2 will be real only at one particular frequency. Where is that? When the phase of the two impedances are the same. Phases of the two impedances are the same. Is this clear? Okay. And just for simplicity, you can do this with any R and uh, any C. I will assume the same R and C used in series and uh, parallel. Okay. So, what is the frequency at which they will have the same phase? At 1 by R C. At 1 by R C, the impedance of both has the same phase, phase angle that is minus 45 degrees. So, what is the impedance of this at this frequency? What is the magnitude of the impedance? At omega equals 1 by r c, what is the impedance of the series combination? r by 2, r by 2, r by root 2. Is it less than r? Why would it be less than r? It is in series. Huh? Square root 2 r. And And what about this one? Okay. So, if you use this, what is the value of k that you would have to use to make it an oscillator? Let us say this is uh, z 1 and this is z 2, we are looking at z 2 by z 1 plus z 2. What is it? How much is z 2 by z 1 plus z 2? I have already written z 1 and z 2. How much is it? Huh? 1 by 1 by 3. This is correct or not? Yeah. So, what should be the value of k? 3. K must be 3. So, essentially, if you do this,
So, you get yet another oscillator right and this is known as the Wien bridge oscillator. Are you familiar with bridge circuits? Have you taken course on measurement already or you know what a bridge is? You know what a Wheatstone bridge is? What is it? Yeah, it is used for uh, various things essentially you can use it to determine like small changes in one element by detecting the balance condition. In general the null condition is kind of easy to detect, okay. it is much harder to see where uh, some voltage or something reaches a certain point, but the null can be detected with uh, I mean in especially traditionally that could be detected quite easily. So, anyway bridge is a arrangement of uh, impedances where you have a forcing current here and you look for the response there and then when the impedances are in a particular ratio this voltage will be zero the differential voltage okay so this bridge is now also a frequency dependent bridge or an ac bridge where one side is frequency independent you have a resistive divider and the other side is a very badly drawn diagram, but the other side is frequency dependent. Okay. So, what happens is this uh, nulling condition happens only at one particular frequency. Okay. So, anyway at that uh, that null happens to be the virtual ground voltage and then you can remove the excitation and it remains that way. Okay. Anyway, we would not go into that, but it is related to the bridge that is why it is called the Wien bridge oscillator. Okay. It is also it used to be kind of popular and again. So, what happens is you can evaluate this exactly for an arbitrary k that is not 2. Okay. So, you will find that uh, the condition will be sorry k not equal to 3. Okay. So, you will find that you will get a second order expression for the I mean let us say you take the transfer function from somewhere to somewhere else you will get a second order expression and if k equals 3 the quality factor becomes infinity. Okay. If k is more than 3 it goes into the right half plane and if k is less than 3 it goes into the left half plane and so on. Okay. So, again I would not go into the amplitude stabilization of this. If you make this and let us say you set k to be slightly more than 3, okay, 3.05 or 3.1 it will start oscillating and the amplitude will get limited to the supply or I mean the saturation voltages of the op amp. Like I said it does not give very pure uh, uh, sine waves okay. and there are other ways of uh, stabilizing the amplitude. Essentially you have to somehow control k that is you have to k the gain of this right. If you think of this as the amplifier the gain depends on these two resistors. Okay. So, you have to control one or both of those resistors so that the amplitude stabilizes to certain value. See this? Do you recognize his name? HP. So that's the founder of uh, Hewlett Packard. I mean, that's Bill Hewlett. So this was his, uh, as you can see, master's thesis from Stanford long back. I don't know if the time is here. Nineteen thirty-nine. Okay. So that was the work to make an oscillator. You know that Hewlett Packard started with test instruments right now HP is a computer company and Hewlett Packard has become Agilent and which has become Keysight and so on. Okay. But this is how it started off they started making these oscillators and it was a Wien bridge oscillator. Let me see if I can find a schematic. It is actually a quite clever way of uh, stabilizing the amplitude. So, that uh, you get very pure sine waves that was the idea. So, so let us say I do not think you will recognize this at all, but uh, it is a vein bridge oscillator. What it did was the following. I mean, if you he had vacuum tubes, whatever, there are some instead of transistors, you have vacuum tubes. And if you make the initial loop gain more than uh, uh, minus 1, more negative than minus 1, it will the poles will go into the right half plane and it will get limited by some nonlinearity, just like the op amp, the supply voltages. Okay. So, that he did not want. So, what he did was he connected a 
let me now call this R 1 and this R 2 was connected in series with a light bulb. So, what happens is as the amplitude increases the current through this branch increases then what is the next part of the story. <laughs> Why? Yeah, the light bulb heats up, its resistance increases. So, the I mean this is R 2 is this whole thing right, the sum of these two. So, R 2 actually increases, so the gain reduces and so on. And the light bulb although its resistance increases, it is still a linear element. So, we still have a linear amplifier, but whose gain can be controlled and it is automatically controlled. And it chooses of course, the type of the light bulb which has the right kind of characteristics. So, this is the first product of Hewlett Packard made in this garage. Right? Okay, so, we can stop here, we will not go into this and actually there is a nice book called uh, I do not know if you have seen this, I think it is analog circuit design art science and personalities, it is by an author Jim Williams. I mean it has some people talking about circuits they have built. Uh, but it's not a it's not a journal which describes like circuits in great scholarly detail. Okay, so one of the chapters is about this, and at least some of the stuff should be understandable by you with the background that we have in this uh, uh, course. If you, I mean, I think it's in the library. You can read it if you have a chance. Okay. Any questions so far? So we have the Weinberg oscillator, which is also popular to make uh, sinusoidal oscillations. But like I said, I mean, as the technology has advanced and we have faster and faster circuits. You can digitally store a sine wave, use a digital to analog converter to get a sine wave. Now, for all low frequency stuff that is what you would use. Now, there is always some frequency beyond which such things become harder. So, you have to use oscillators to get the sinusoids. Okay. Any questions? <coughs>